Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 12, Draft Day Sports Pro Football. Uh, we're still working towards our next season with the Cowboys. So, what I told you last episode, if you haven't seen that, that was our draft. Go check it out. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to do today is kind of work our way into the preseason and get ready for the start of the season next episode. And I want to go through the roster and spend a little time kind of now that we're two seasons in, we've had our second draft. Uh, so we've got two new classes of free agents, drafted players, what have you. So let's get in and start looking around. Now, the information that I found relates to a game called Pro Football Simulator. And you're going, well, RC, what is that? And you're playing draft day sports. Well, PFS, or Pro Football Simulator, was the initial game that became Draft Day Sports Pro Football. Uh, it was written by the same guy, uh, Brooks, and it was, under, it was his game that he did on his own prior to joining Wolverine and starting to uh, develop games for Wolverine Studios. So it's still the same guy. Just the names changed. The game itself is basically the same. Now, some of this stuff may be a little outdated, may not be 100% accurate, but sometimes when you're researching, you go with what the best is that you can find, right? So that's what I'm going to share with you guys uh, here. So we're going to start off at quarterbacks. So quarterback, there's two guys that... Uh, seem to have quite a bit of success and those are OK Bandit and Skelter in the online leagues over at Sim Nation and that's where I'm pulling this data from so um, basically they're saying intelligence and I've sorted this by intelligence to start uh, so intelligence is your most important then accuracy and lastly is arm now you may be thinking well, quarterback's got to throw the ball. His arm has to be good. Well, he's got to be smart to make the right decision and throw to the right person. He's got to be accurate to hit the person he's throwing it to. And if you think about it, if you're, you know, unless you're, you know, playing the old air, you know, uh, you know, you know, Daryl Armonica style offense with the Raiders, uh, most of the passes are relatively short hitting your receivers in stride, and then letting them get yards after the catch. Same with your backs out of the backfield. So the arm, you don't have to be able to throw the ball 80 yards through the air. You've got to be able to hit 20 yards, 15 yards, 5 yards, but you've got to be able to hit them accurately in stride. And that's where these evidently, again, this is just my reading and interpreting what they're saying and their suggestions. And when you see me look over here off camera, I'm looking at my second monitor where I've got a browser pulled up and I'm looking at the notes uh, that they put out. So one of the guys, now again, this is for PFS, which came before Draft Day Sports, what, 19? So this is three-year-old information. It was, well, it was actually posted January 27th of 2013, to be honest with you. But, again, this is the most, you know, they're still using this in their league with D DDS PF20. So, this is still kind of their go-to uh, manual for their league. Uh, so, if we look here, they, you know, the suggestion is for a starter at quarterback, he would want at least an 85 in all three of these categories no less than 80. Now, Prescott meets two of those three. Accuracy is a 79. And then we look at Cooper Rush, who has an 82, but nobody else has the intelligence, uh, and only Keith Sharp has the arm. So, you know, you kind of got to balance that out, and that's where they're saying you can't just look at the OVR. They may have a great OVR, but if his ratings in the key categories are bad, then it may not really be helping you with a true OVR so or the overall rating. So right now, I mean, I don't think there's any deb de uh, debate that Dak Prescott needs to be our starter. Uh, and then if we look at everything else, intelligence – 
I think Keith Sharp is still our second best guy, although his accuracy is not good. It's actually the worst. Now, can it get better? Okay, one of the dogs got hold of a squeaker. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we're, you know, that's what we're dealing with. Now, in looking at this, I'm going to say that Mike White is expendable. He's in his third year, fourth year now. By far, he's the worst quarterback out of the out of the bunch. So I think we get rid of him, save five hundred eighty thousand. Now we won't do that till the season starts. We're just in preseason right now, so that's that's going to be in place. All right, let's move on to running backs. And you may go, hey, you got a lot of people injured. We just finished training camp. They are fatigued. Oh, one thing I did notice, uh, training. The game defaults to a 22. Basically, this will get you through with minimal fatigue problems. It will give you less upside but also less downside. The higher you go to the max of 25, you can see bigger returns, but you could see big losses as well. So, uh, let's see. Okay, already assigned to that schedule. Good. Uh, so anyway, that is uh, something to think about. You know what? I do want to real quick... Oh, we got a couple of emails. Okay. All right, we'll delete those. Delete that. Do I have a... Sign a free agent. Uh, clear wide receiver. Huh. All right, there's Coons. So Coons is available. Let's sign him if we can. Uh, can I sign him? Maybe I can't. Contract? Ah, here we go. Sign to the practice squad. Let's sign him to the active squad. Oh yeah, he's... We can't offer him. Okay, well, moving on then. Uh, so back to roster. Roster. There we are. All right. So we were looking at running backs. All right. So for running backs, speed and agility are the two most important, preferably above 90. Uh, so speed and agility. So even Ezekiel Elliott, an 89 OVR, isn't even close to those. So... You know, now this is probably for your uber elite players. And again, when you're dealing with salary caps, you're not going to be able to sign the best of the best of the best at every single position, right? So I would say this is probably best case scenario. Uh, the other guy uh, likes fast running backs, so high speed with good hands, because that makes him more of a threat out of the backfield. Uh, in the passing game and able to get to the edge in the rushing game. Uh, let's see. Now that he also says you can also, instead of fast, you can go with strong and agile. So high strength and agility. And these are the guys that can like break tackles, get a little, get extra, you know, get that extra two to three yards of carry uh, just by breaking one or two tackles. So, uh, you know, those come into play. So, again, you know, and you have to evaluate. So, again, these numbers may not be fully accurate, but they are what they are. All right, taking a look at fullback. Now, this first guy said likes to run the ball a lot, so he goes with a run-heavy offense. So he wants a fullback who can block some. Uh, on the flip side, if you're not running the ball, they tend to get little to no action. Uh, the other guy says strength and run blocking all the way, but I don't use them much. So uh, Caleb Trinidad is the guy that we just drafted. 
Douglas Johnson is the free agent that we signed. Oh, he's out of Louisiana Lafayette. Way to go, man. Oh, no. Did we? No, he was undrafted. Cool. Louisiana Lafayette's where I went to college, so my alma mater. Awesome. All right, so run blocking. All right, so Trinidad's much better. Douglas is over over 50 so he's over average they're both relatively strong uh johnson's a little more agile and has more speed so if you were going to run the ball maybe he'd be the way to go i still think trinidad will be our starter there but again i don't use the fullback a lot so is it that big of a deal all right tight ends um, now, OK Bandit says he's most undecided about. So he wants an all-around guy, catching, running, blocking, uh, rather than going for either a pure catcher or a pass blocker. Uh, the other guy says there are very few great all-around tight ends, but they can be effective. Uh, due to the lack of good block receiving tight ends, I opt for ones that can help in my run game, but be a balanced receiver. So they basically give a secondary option instead of your, pri you know, like Jason Witten was a good example of a primary option. Tony Gonzalez is a primary option, but most teams secondary. So if we're looking at that, we want run blocking. So Olafont would be our go-to guy. He's got speed. He's got the best hand, well, second best hands. And he's got some strength to break tackles. So that would be our run blocking guy if we went that route. Moving into receivers, uh, you do have your number one, your number two, your number three. Uh, so he likes his number one to be fast, who can spread the field. The rest, I like good hands especially the slot receiver, and won't be out running anybody. And then a few fast guys to back up the wides. Uh, he, he also likes a tall receiver. Also, he doesn't know if it matters in the game with the coding. Um, the other guy says speed kills. I like 90-plus speed on all my wide receivers. Next preference is agility, since that equates to yards after the catch. So FYI, um, at least 85 in agility. Third priority is hands. Uh, he, and he admits some people might disagree and think you could go with slower guys who catch everything, but he doesn't mind a couple of drops if they, if they add up to 30 yards per pass completion. So uh, hand skill he feels improves more over a career rather than speed and agility, which makes sense. You can learn to you catch better. You're only going to be able to run as fast as you can run, right? So if we take a look at speed, we've got three 80-plus guys, Cooper, Ship, and Gallup. Uh, then Randall Cobb, who has the tied for the second best hands. So 75, I would say, is probably still average. Michael Gallup's in there. Uh, Noah Brown probably won't play a lot. So anyway, that's your receivers. And we don't have any – I want to look – I'm looking for rookies in there too. So Johnson uh, – yeah, Keith Sharp's a rookie. Oh, Caleb we signed as a free agent. Douglas we just signed as a post-draft free agent, so he's a rookie. All right, nothing there. Randy Ship we signed last year. All right, moving into the guards. Uh, bad agility, very strong, likes a 90 in strength. Uh, the offense, he, he, the other guy doesn't break him out, but... Um, It's hard to balance a good run line with a pass line. So you kind of need to figure out which direction you're going to go and draft or sign players based on that. Uh, so he looks for, now he's he gets into everything. So let's try to keep this. 
uh, guards, very strong, good run blocking. Um, so that's that's what he looks for in the guard position. So if we look at, we can look at run blocking. And then, so there's an example. Zach Martin is a good balance. So he that's why he would be the highest paid. Uh, number two would be Xavier Suafilo, right? And then we've got the rookie down here uh, who is basically the worst. He can pass block a little bit better. And now he is much stronger, so that's probably going to give him the edge over Williams if I only keep four. And, you know, he's got – he's cheaper, more upside because of his age. He's got longer to develop. He's already much stronger. I don't need much agility there. We don't need speed. Run blocking, he's pretty close, and he's already a better pass blocker. So I'm going to say Scott's going to be number three or number four in a backup role. Connor Williams may lose his job this year. So that's, again, just what I'm seeing here. Taking a look at tackles. Uh, so apart from pass and run blocking, uh, one guy looks for agility. Uh, Got to be quick on the feet to deal with the speed rushers coming off the edge, the defensive ends. Again, that makes sense to real life. Uh, let's see. Uh, a, at least a 45 in agility, preferably 55. Doesn't care much about strength, but still would like above 85 if he can get it. The other guy, as far as tackle, uh, he looks for strength with good pass blocking. Uh, so, you, you know, running the ball, you're going to be running off your center guard. Tackles need to be able to hold the edge to give your quarterback time to pass. So I kind of like that idea. So if we look here, Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins, Mario Lance uh, is a rookie that we signed. He's right there with Collins, and he's only 255000 So I think that's a bargain. Now his strength is lacking. He will probably get better. Uh, that's going to leave Cameron Fleming exposed. We only have four. So I uh, don't know how many we need to keep, but that's going to put Lance probably above uh, Fleming in the depth chart. Moving over to center. Uh, let's see. Center. All right. Uh, again, the first guy likes to run the ball a lot, so he's looking for a strong center, a lot of weight. Uh, the other guy is, he wants intelligence, even though he doesn't know if it matters or not. So there's not a lot of information on centers. Again, figure out if you're going to be a predominant running team uh, or passing team. So in this case, Rich Corley is better at run blocking by a little bit over Travis Frederick. But Frederick is much better at pass blocking. A little less strength, more agility. So, again, not sure how much that plays in. So, and then I think uh, Raymond Flores is a little more well-balanced. So, that's why he would be numbered. And that's our new uh, that's our new guy. So, that's one of our rookies making a million. He was our first-round pick. So, he's probably going to be number two on the depth chart. And then Robert's we drafted as well. So, if we look at him... He can't really, you know, he's probably, he's got strength, but it's like still lower than Corley. Corley's only 24, so I'm going to say Robert's might get cut. He may not make the team as a rookie, so that would be a guy that would be a bust and a wasted draft pick. Not necessarily a bust, just, you know, when you draft that late, that is what it is. All right. Punters, I don't think they really talk about punters or kickers. Uh, nope, they don't. So I think these are pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Your punter is going to be your kicking power. Uh, that's going to equal distance, kicking accuracy. More for field goals, that would be good for maybe coffin corner punts. Uh, so no competition there. Uh, 8277. So we may be on the verge of wanting to look for somebody here. 
Uh, let's drop it back to the defensive. Let's do defensive ends first. When I go through a list of players, when I get to defense, it's defensive ends, then defensive tackles. Don't know why. What? What? Wow. All right, uh, let's see. So he's down here. All right, defensive ends. Uh, they don't need to be strong. Still wants 75 minimum. Uh, they need to be fast and agile. They don't need to tackle. You know, they're, they're pass rush. Uh, the other guy is fast, strong, and good tackling. Putting pressure on the quarterback is important. So you can see even between two people that do well and have success, win Super Bowls in their league, two different thoughts when it comes to tackling. But definitely speed kills and is much needed. Uh, so that's going to put us in this order. And then agility. So Demarcus Lawrence all of a sudden becomes our third best defensive end behind Second-year player Joe Jackson and Robert Quinn, right? Randy Gregory drops even farther. He's got strength. We don't really care about strength, though, right? And then speed really drops off immensely. So we're going to have to maybe look at free agency or draft next year at this position, right? So now that we can, now that we're kind of digging in, which I haven't done to this point, digging into the roster, and you should probably do this your first year, <laughs> but I wanted to get into the game, right? So you know, it's kind of given us an idea. All right, defensive tackle. Uh, first guy, uh, strong, ninety plus, semi fast. If they're going to get any sacks. Uh, but I don't care about their tackling as long as it's not horrible. And he grades horrible as below 60. Okay. Um, and just an FYI, he had a defensive tackle who led the league in sacks for two seasons in a row with 23 sacks each season and only had a 60 tackling skill. So, you know, they're going to tackle the quarterback even with a lower tackling rating. But uh, so that's so let's see, let's go back and semi fast but strong. Okay, the other guy, uh, he likes high tackles to stop runs up the middle, and that's really all he's looking at. So if we look at strength, there's our depth chart, right. The other guy, and then if we look at speed, unfortunately, my two best strong men are my slowest guys. So if we break it down by speed and then look at str uh, strength, so Tristan Hill, Antoine Woods, and then I would probably go down to Branch and Malik Collins there. Daniel Wise would, pr you know, even though he's in the middle here kind of you know kind of last if we look at those numbers all right linebackers and i hope you guys don't mind this i'm just you know it's helping me look at my team and i'm trying to give you guys information uh so linebackers um speed and tackling in the at the middle linebacker position Strong side linebacker is strength and tackling. Weak side is basically whoever is left. Uh, the other guy says no specific preferences, but like all around guys, decent speed, 70 plus, decent tackling, 80 plus, strong and agile as possible, nothing less than 65. Doesn't look at, at intelligence or hands, but obviously more is better. So if we go there uh let's see so let's look at tackling tackling fuel uh so tackling with speed and he is our fastest so we'd want to play jalen in the middle and then we would have what did i strength and tackling on the outside so that would be 
Van Der Esch probably. Yep, Van Der Esch or Jose uh, Jose Harris, our rookie, but he his tackling is not great, so I think he needs to be coming up depth. So I think Van Der Esch is at the number two on the strong side, and then weak side is whoever's left. So we would say Joe Thomas, although he doesn't have strength. And it, it is strength, right? Oh, speed. He likes speed. And I think speed gets you there. So tackling with speed. I think Thomas could do a job. Lamar Houston would probably be better. The 11th year vet. Uh, speed, he drops off. Chris Covington would be able to do a pretty good job. So, you know, you're kind of looking. It is the three most expensive guys, and then probably the fourth most expensive guy are our, our, our top four. We've got the rookie down here. He's got strength. He's, you know, he needs to get faster, which he may not. Tackling will probably get better. So, anyway, that's linebackers. If we look at the secondary. Let's see. Uh, it does not take a lot for a cornerback to be effective. They just need to be fast to keep up with wide receivers. And remember, the predominant stat for receivers was speed. So you want fast corners, uh, some agility, but that's about it. And the other guy says speed, 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 90 plus uh, agility to be able to chase down people. And don't care much about tackling, intelligent, or hands. But again, the higher the better and prioritized in that order. Tackling, intelligence, and hands. So speed and agility. So if we sort by speed, Anthony Brown. Yep. Most, uh, second most expensive. 79 and 63. 72, 73, so Michael Johnson probably two. 80 is a good jump up on agility, but again, that's a drop off in speed. Does that agility make up for it? And Jordan Lewis, who is one of my favorite players because he went to Michigan and he was a killer cornerback, uh, but he may be better suited to safety because he's got the worst speed although the best agility. So at that price, maybe I don't don't want to keep him at that position, but it looks like corner is a pot spot that we want to address as well. All right, safeties. Uh, let's look at strong, well, let's look at strong safety first. So the first guy likes speed, really good agility, decent tackling, and strength. The other guy, uh, this is strong safety. So these guys make the stops. So fast, ag fast, speed, agility, but strength and tackling are the most important. So strength, tackling. So Frazier, then Heath in that order. And then... Speed and agility after that. Uh, so that's where we might go with Heath, right? So let's see, strength. Because this is this is making tackles. So that's probably going to be Frazier taking Heath's job this year. And then if we look at free safety, speed and agility. See you later. Speed and agility and speed. So, speed. So, Byron Jones, obvious starter, and we're really weak here. John Rodriguez, we just drafted him. Uh, he's got good agility. In fact, he's the most agile back there. 
So he's probably going to replace Xavier Woods, and I like the height thing too. So uh, that's going to put Woods to the back burner as well. And that's all the positions. So where are we at time-wise for this episode? We're right at 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and do the two weeks. I've already done my depth charts. And show the score. 38-17 against defending champion Houston. Of course, Houston is going to be celebrating like they won the Super Bowl again because that's how they roll when they beat Dallas in the preseason. And then Dallas doesn't really care. Andre Smith, Carolina, a major injury. He'll be out for the season, it looks like. Andre Smith, ouch. That's not good. Uh, no emails. Roster. Starters. They're only on injured reserve if I put them there. Um, team info. Nope, not there. Team schedule. Team news. There we are. All right. So, Jamise Olawali retired after the preseason from the team. He signed two guys in free agency. All right, we everybody's out with you know everybody's got fatigue, so that's the that's the one thing. So that's fine. All right, let's go back to week two. Uh, we will simulate the week. Check the box score. 34 to 10, Dallas Prescott, 253 yards, three touchdowns. Elliott, almost 100 yards, and ship. All right, so that's the off season. Now we need to go into our. Are we playing Houston again? Really? Where is team schedule? We are playing Houston in week one again. Wow. That's a little odd, but oh well. Uh, let's see. I do need to go into the roster, right? Because we are over 53. We have nine players too many. We're able to put eight on the practice squad, I believe. So let's go through here real quick. Um, intelligence and accuracy i think kevin sharp's going to be our number two and then i think mike white well let's see accuracy intelligence yeah i think mike white is going to be uh we're going to cut him so Let's see, roster management. So we've got one extra quarterback. All right, so Mike White moved to practice. All right. Running back. If you guys hear that, that's crickets in my lizard cage. They're being very loud this morning. Sorry about that. Um, he just hasn't eaten them all yet, I guess. All right. Uh, fullback. Do we need another fullback? Now, fullback was more about run blocking. So we're going to go with Trinidad. So I think we're going to move him to the practice squad. All right. I think we're only allowed to put eight on eight on here, so we're going to have nine players. If that's the case, I think our quarterback is the one that gets cut. All right. Um, I'm going to hold off on tight end. All right. We have two extra guards. So guards are your strength. And block. 
checking. So sixty two seventy four. I think Wickman is actually better than Scott. I'm going to move Scott to the practice squad. And we're going to cut Williams. Third year. Is it Williams I want to cut? Lowest strength. Lowest blocking. Yep. We're going to um, Williams. We're going to, uh, to release him. Did he start last year? No, he only played three. So contract, yeah, we're going to release him. All right, close that. All right, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and auto adjust. All right, so Johnson, Roberge, Jarwin, Chung, Goodwin, Harris. All right, and that leaves us... Four quarterbacks, which I don't really need. Hmm. So would I want where's Jarwin? I'm going to move him back to active, and then I'm going to drop. I'm going to cut. Who was it I was going to cut? I forgot. Intelligence. Come on. Where's my... Damn it. All right, let's go to roster. Let's just go back to roster. Here we go. Mike White. White was the guy, yes? No. Was it him or Cooper Rush? Intelligence, accuracy, yeah, Mike White. We're going to cut him. Stats, contract, uh, release player. Bam. All right, and then we're going to close that. Now we're going to go to roster management. So he shows as a free agent there, but he's still on my roster here. Hello. All right. So we have seven on the practice squad, three, three over here. So I could have could have saved that other guy, I guess, but oh well, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. Uh, I wonder, can I... Let's go check that receiver again. Coons. Can I, can I sign... Oh, we signed him to the practice squad. Sweet. All right, cool. Is there anybody else we want to sign? No, I can only sign the one player. But I wanted, I wanted to. I've been looking at him, so we didn't have to offer him a contract. It just gave him the uh, whatever contract. Let's go see what he's making. All right, wide receiver. Okay, let's let's just look at receivers. All right, so Coons, good speed, like that, right? Hands can get better. Uh, Agility's not great, but he's actually the third fastest receiver on our team now. So that's actually good. Uh, now, how does he match up? Intelligence. What did, what did they say for uh, receivers? Just to double check. Speed, agility. All right, so let's see. Speed is here. Agility, so he's got a 59. He's got a 72. Okay, so I'm still okay with that. Coons is now on the practice squad. We've got a valid roster. 
let's go into our depth chart. All right, we will have our offensive coordinator. Do that. Cooper, Cobb, Gallup, ship number two. Cobb, and uh, you know what? I think Cobb and Gallup, 75, 83. Yeah, I want Gallup to be my number three. Gallup and then Cobb right there. Uh, yep, and then we'll have Gallup and Cobb. Gallup and Cobb. All right, we'll save that. That was one change I wanted to make. Sharp's our backup. Pollard. All right, defense. We'll let our defensive coordinator make that change. All right. There's an Allen Branch from last year. So Lawrence is still up there at right end. Covington. Jalen Smith, middle linebacker. Covington, Houston, Van Der Esch. Okay. Brown. I think there was something we were talking about with the corners, was there not? Where are the corners? See, this whole thing here is not even in the same order that it is in the list. Oh, those crickets are killing me, guys. Um, all right, corners was speed and a little agility. So speed. Brown. Yes, 72, 70, 69. So actually, I think I would want Jackson. Now Jackson isn't even on that list. And then, all right, so we'll go with that. We'll save that. And we will come back. So uh, let me know what you thought of this episode, if you like the way we went through it. I don't know that we'll have to do that every year. I just thought it would be good to kind of go through some of the rating suggestions from uh, some of the guys that I look up to for this game uh, and lean on their knowledge and expertise uh, because it's not a game that I play personally on a regular basis. Um, so we've got our club. Uh, we're picked to finish second in the division, uh, eight votes to be runner-up uh, in the conference, which means we could miss the playoffs by that one game again. So let me know how you think we're going to end up this year in the comments. Let me know what you think of our draft. Uh, let me know what you think of our free agent signings. Oh, we have to do special teams too. We'll let the head coach do that one. Oh, and save that so that way we're ready to roll. Uh, Trinidad is our starting fullback. Smith Martinez Scott, the new guy. Good. Uh, Flores. Didn't we decide? 82. 7882. Uh, strength. So Frederick may have lost his job. Raymond Flores is the rookie. So that's our first round pick. So they're going to put him in over Frederick. How do I feel about that? Because I really like Travis Frederick in real life. Hmm. Hmm. Frederick's a better pass block, uh, run blocker by a fair bit. Just barely better pass blocking. Less strength. 
and they said for center strength. Now that's because the, the guy that likes strength is because he likes to run the ball. Now we've done well in passing and we are going to pass the ball. So the next thing I'm going to look at is kind of setting up your strategy on this screen. Um, now this is something I cannot control. It does not appear. Uh, I can flip through them, but I can't change them. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I can change this. So you can put in multiple packages. There's your play analysis. Game plan. playbook so I think what I read on your ratios a 50 is a true 50 50 it's going to be pretty split a hundred percent doesn't mean or a hundred ratio doesn't mean a hundred percent of the time it means more like a 60 65 percent of the time so like a 65 35 and that's with a 100 ratio. So anyway, um, we've got uh, these guys. David Brooks on the offense. Um, defensive play calling. I wish I could uh, change that. Because shouldn't my... Yeah. right there oh, one of the other things that I read if you're controlling this change your primary receiver again this is just what I read to like your number three receiver and that forces because he's always going to throw to your one and two more but if you change your primary to your number three He's not going to be the primary, but it will see them spread the ball around a little bit more. So just something that they read. Uh, anyway, uh, that's where we're going to leave off. So uh, I will get back into it with uh, games uh, next episode. We'll uh, get through the first quarter of the season, whatever we uh, decided. I'll have to figure that out again. Uh, but anyway, hit the like button, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. How are we going to end up the year record-wise? Do we make the playoffs this year? What do you think of our draft and uh, some of the decisions that I made? And did you like getting the information on the uh, on the different positions? You know, like I said, I don't know if we need to do that every year, but I thought, you know, we hadn't really covered it before, so I thought it was good to do that at least once. Take care, guys. See you next time. Bye.